Hi guys, how are you going? Campbell here from Autodidactic Channel. Hope you're all having a splendid day. And as always, autodidactic means to be self-educated. And we all need to be self-educated because if we are not, the only choice we have left is to believe what other people tell us. And in this crazy topsy-turvy world, most of what other people are telling us is uh, based on lies or nothing, or random thoughts and opinions. Uh, so that's what we do here, is we try and dig out the truth, the truth of our story and what's actually gone on in the past and how we got here. And uh, today I want to have a look at some cliff top castles and monasteries, uh, buildings perched up on cliffs and mountains that just make you wonder how they did it, you know, especially when we look at the narrative of, you know, it's just built back in the Middle Ages by a few priests. Uh, when you see the scale of these things, it, it doesn't make sense at all. So let's jump in, try and peel back some more layers and have a look at some cliff top retreats. <laughs> So we're going to start off with this place. This is called Meteora, or Meteor A, A, A. And this was sent to me by a subscriber. And yeah, this is it, basically. It's a monastery up on a cliff. Uh, so it's one of these weird out-of-place buildings that we uh, find. And it says the Meteora, literally at the middle of the sky, suspended in air or in the heavens above etymologically related to meteorology. It is one of the largest and most important complexes of Greek Orthodox monasteries in Greece, second only to Mount Athos. Uh, the six monasteries, so there's six monasteries up there, are built of natural sandstone rock pillars at the northwestern edge of the plain of Thessaly. Okay, so there we go. Uh, basically, it says for history, caves in the vicinity of Meteora were inhabited continuously between 50,000 and 5,000 years ago. There we go, cavemen, those mythical cavemen. The oldest known example of a man-made structure, a stone wall that blocked two-thirds of the entrance to the Theopetra cave, was constructed 23,000 years ago. Okay, there we go kind of pushes the narrative back a bit, doesn't it? Probably as a barrier against cold winds. There you go. The Earth was experiencing an ice age at that time and many Paleolithic and Neolithic artifacts have been found within the caves. And just as a side note, uh, the Neolithic and Paleolithic never existed, guys. They're, uh, they're fairy tales. And most of the what we're told of fairy tales are probably pretty close to our actual past. Uh, in the 9th century AD, an ascetic group of hermit monks moved up on the ancient pinnacles. They were the first people to inhabit Meteora since the Neolithic era. They lived in the hollows and fissures in the rock towers, some as high as 1,800 feet or 550 metres above the plain. Hmm, wonder how they got up there. This great height combined with the sheerness of the cliff walls kept away all but the most determined visitors. Initially, the hermits led a life of solitude, meeting only on Sundays and special days to worship and pray in a chapel built at the foot of a rock known as Chuplani or Chupiani. So there you go. So uh, basically, yes, yeah, some monks went rock climbing back in 900 they say and uh just yeah jumped in some caves and some fishes and then uh yeah somehow they started metamorphosizing rocks i think let's have a look the exact date or of the establishment of the monasteries is unknown but by the late 11th and 12th centuries a rudimentary monastery state had formed called the skeet or the stagoi 
and was centered around the still standing church of Theotokos, the mother of God. By the end of the 12th century, an ascetic community had flocked to Meteora. Okay, so 900, they climb up into caves. Uh, then by the 11th or 12th centuries, there's rudimentary monasteries that don't know when they were built. But then they say that it was centered around the still standing church of Theolocus. Um, who built that and what was it still standing from? Because I don't mention that up when these dudes were scanning the rocks to live in the caves. In 1344, Althenos, <laughs> that dude from Mount Athos, brought a group of followers to Meteora from 1356 to 1372. He founded the great Meteoran Monastery on Broad Rock, which were perfect for the monks. They were safe from political upheaval and had complete control of the entire monastery. The only means of reaching it was by climbing a long ladder, which was drawn up whenever the monks were threatened. So there you go. Maybe uh, maybe we need a barbaria up on a cliff somewhere. <laughs> Could be a good idea. All right, so let's uh, check out this monastery on a cliff. Okay, so here's a bit of the landscape. This is the monastery here. And as you can see, pretty interesting uh, yeah, scenery that we get here. We're getting this familiar kind of, you know, striations and things uh, to strange lines. And as you'll see, there's actually another monastery up here. Uh, so we'll have a look at that one in a minute. But yeah, here. So this is actually the Athos uh, monastery where the guy came down and founded this one. Uh, but we just get, you know, the same stuff, the, these strange formations with, you know, lines all the way through them. These actually look like faces almost, don't they? Look at that one. Nose, mouth, eye. Uh, but yeah, and then we just get this thing perched up on this cliff. But this same phenomena of the kind of just, you know, it's hard to see where the cliff stops and the brick starts. They just melted, melded into each other. It's, it's very strange. So we're not sure what's going on there. Ah, uh, that's an interesting... You know, just out of the blue, rising out of the land rock. Here's another shot. This is the backside. And as you can see, it's just a big sort of plateau. Now, look at this big fissure down here. And you can see that this building actually goes down into it. And it looks like there's a rope down there. Maybe that's how they get up. So uh, you'd want to be fit to live up here. And, of course, we've got domes and things on these buildings. And they're not just, you know, little buildings. They're big three, four-storey brick buildings with domes and, you know, columns and towers. And this rock. And here's a bit of a look at the front side. Now, here you can see they've got stairways going up and down, but looking very melty. And again, this is what I'm talking about, this brick where it joins the rock. As you can see, they haven't leveled it off. They haven't leveled off any rock, but, you know, they're able to build this massive structure, but they can't level the rock, or maybe they're just, you know, obviously so good that they don't need to, because look at this. It's just, it's just yeah, bizarre how they do that. Stairs all the way down. I mean, just imagine the work just to get these stairs up. Look, this comes off this sheer cliff. And here, you know, very strange shaped rocks. So I'm still not sure what's going on here. And this is the thing, did they, because we know all buildings are built on, on, you know, basically on other buildings. So is that what this is? And can you see that? See those two windows? Obviously they're not, they look like they weren't finished, which means they were made from the outside as well. Just sitting right out and blending just straight into this cliff face. And of course, there's all these sort of pitted holes and things everywhere. You know, what are these? They're just sort of everywhere. <laughs> and here's another shot. You can see how big the structure is. And again, uh, it's just built. Look at this. Just right into the rock face and you know you can see bits of rock here just sticking up into the wall you know none of them are flattened off 
it's just joined so what is going on here and obviously they're dumping out their cement just all this slurry out here nice uh and i don't know there's a few you know just i don't know what that is it looks just like rubble doesn't it like something's been smashed and rolled down the hill uh more scaffolding here look at these are all cantilevered all these balconies a bit scary but yeah more scaffolding so they've obviously done or are doing a bit of restoration on this place and of course domes at the top and this is a front view now this one look at this look at this <laughs> Now that looking very door like, but look at these rocks, and they've just kind of built around it and filled that in. And then this bit here, see how it's sticking out, sticking right out onto the rocks. What's that? And again, we see these windows in the wall that goes down and just melts. And this one, we can see a bit of an, a wall down here. So, what's that? Is that part of the older structure, maybe? And down here, obviously, yeah, you can see like the superstructure. And you can always see like a line here. Was it all built at once? Domes, they're very nice domes. Another one here and here, just everywhere. And up here as well. And look, and you can just see this is like one, two, that's four stories plus a dome. So this is six stories. I mean, just, yeah not small structures how do they get everything up how do they get all this i mean just imagine how many tons just of brick and rock they would have needed up there that's not counting the cement the glass the wood the iron uh, you know all the roofing you know plumbing and things like that heating cooling all the other bits that go in it then all the fixtures the domes and everything and then you, you have you've got to start inside you've got to get furniture up there it's just ridiculous Big tower, and as we see here, terraced walls coming down. And Mount Athos is the largest autonomous monastic, it's actually a monastic state, it says, of the Holy Mountain. And you can see over here the flag of Mount Athos is actually a double headed eagle. And down here again with its crown on. So there we go. So Mount Athos is a mountain and peninsula in northern Greece, a world heritage site and autonomously uh, pointy within the, Hel within the Hellenic Republic under the official name Autonomous Monastic State of the Holy Mountain. Uh, geography, access, history. Here we go. Athos in Greek mythology is the name of one of the Gigantes. Gigantes, one of the giants that challenged the Greek gods during the Gigantonachia. Okay, we're going to have to look into that. Athos threw a massive rock against Poseidon, which fell into the Aegean Sea and became Mount Athos. According to another version of the story, Poseidon used the mountain to buy the defeated giant. Oh, sorry, to bury the defeated giant. Uh, okay. That's the history, guys. Uh, it's just complete, um, yeah, giants throwing rocks at each other. So they're not even going to tell us how they built it. Uh, according to the Athor Athenite tradition, the Blessed Virgin Mary was sailing accompanied by St. John the Evangelist from Joppa to Cyprus to visit Lazarus when the ship was blown off course to the then pagan Athos. It was forced to anchor near the port of Clement, close to the present monastery of Iveron, the virgin walked ashore and overwhelmed by the wonderful and wild nature and beauty of the mountain, she blessed it and asked her son for it to be her garden, which I guess would be Jesus. A voice was heard saying uh, something in old is that Greek. Uh, let this place be your inheritance and your garden, a paradise and haven of salvation for those seeking to be saved. From that moment, the mountain was consecrated as the garden of the mother of God and was out of bounds to all other women. So there we go. Now, Athos, uh, where are we? 
Mount Athos. Uh, the person who founded this, it doesn't tell us here for some reason, is the guy who founded that last monastery as well. So, uh, should we just have a few quick looks at Mount Athos Monastery? And this is a shot from the front and you can see more scaffolding. I think they might have just left it there. Just sort of bugger that. It's too hard to get up. We're not taking it down. Uh, but again, not the best contrast, but it looks like there's a big bit of rock just hanging out here in the wall. What's going on? Terrace is all the way down. And as you can see here, it looks like we've got different levels. So we've got this level, this bottom one, and this has been built on top. Uh, it looks like we've got another one along here. So I don't know if, if these were built in different stages. Most buildings that we see seem to be. You know, they seem to be built so well that you can just go and build another, you know, one, two, three, four, five story building on the top. And of course this, what's this? Was this an aqueduct? Don't know. But just, you know, pretty ridiculous. And look where it is. And as you can see, this is the peninsula built right out on the water. And huge. I mean, look how big this thing is, really. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, you know, nine stories, ten, who knows. Massive construction. And this thing, you know, we see it all the time. You know, it's built on, seems to be built on top of each other. Doorways, <laughs> look at that little, someone's built a little balcony hanging off here. Now this is all smoothed off, just, you know, again, how do they build into these rocks? How do they do this? Columns up here. Uh, just, you know, a bit ridiculous, really. And this is St. Pelimon Monastery, another one. And again, look at this, built right on the water. Look at this door, it's been filled in. So did this go straight down? Uh, and of course, man-made shoreline on the ocean. Just multi-leveled. I mean, these are probably walls if you look from the top. It's probably like a star fort. And look at this, just <laughs> look at these domes. Chimneys and towers, just ridiculous. Huge stone buildings, and I mean, yep, built for the glory of God, apparently. You know, they don't tell us who built it, how they built it. It was just given enough time and enough people wanting to worship, you can build anything. It's either that or uh, enough slaves or enough. Uh, infantry and you can pretty much build whatever you want look at this another door just going straight into a wall and another pick just to show the sheer size of this thing and again the story always with monasteries you know a couple of monks rock up there's nothing there they just start building you know, in caves build something wooden and before you know it they have this and now I want to have a quick look at a town called Mardin in Turkey. Uh, Mardin is in southeast Turkey, the capital of the Mardin province. It is known for the Artukid architecture of its old city and for its strategic location on a rocky hill near the Tigris River that rises steeply up over flat plains. Uh, the territory of Mardin and Karakadag was known as Izala in the late Bronze Age. Blah, blah, blah. The city and its surrounds were absorbed into Assyria proper during the Middle Assyrian Empire and then again during the Neo-Assyrian Empire. The ancient name was rendered as Izalai in Old Persian and during the uh, Achaemenid, <laughs> Achaemenid, Achaemenid something, Empire, according to the... <laughs> Behistun inscription, it is still regarded as a part of the geopolitical entity of Assyria. And this uh, place is pretty ridiculous. A uh, bit more. Byzantine Isia fell to the Seljuks in the 11th century. Blah, blah, blah. So it's the same story of these old towns and, and just war. They just keep getting taken over and taken over by different people uh, all throughout history or his story. And this is a picture of Mardin and look at it it's just ridiculous it's just house upon house upon house upon house all about this hill 
but look at the architecture it all looks old world it all looks like it's red brick um, we just get the, the common you know arches and stuff everywhere I mean look at this place it just looks like it looks like the uh, you know the shanty towns what are they called in Brazil uh, but these these are actually made of brick these are actually good quality constructions I mean, what a maze to live in that would be. It would be amazing, right? And here we have some of the locals. So, uh, yeah, when I, look, when I was looking for it, I saw a few pics of uh, the people from Mardin, and they do look very Tartarian, I must say. And here's a wide-angle pic, uh, still downloading, but you can see this is the town built on this hillside. The hill keeps coming down here, you know, all on the angle, old world buildings. We've got dome spires, towers, chimneys, the whole lot. Uh, and look what's up here. Oh, there we go. Domes everywhere. You know, these arches. These are the Moorish type arches. And look up here. Look at this. Walled. Again, built straight onto rock. Got a wall around here. This looks like a bit of a tower. More walls popping out here, out of the rocks. And looking very much like, you know, something has melted and flowed down here. And these, I don't know, is this the remnants of what was on bo on the bottom that's been built on, they've just rebuilt on the foundations. See that big arch there? See that? And yeah, just towers. And so basically a big... You know, it's what we see all over the place. It's the big castle on the top of the hill and the town all around it going down the hill. And what we're noticing is the whole hill is actually the castle. You know, if you think of those monasteries we just looked at, um, you know, maybe a bit of a bigger scale, but if they got covered, you could imagine, you know, you'd get a hill like this. So here's another pic of Mardin. And you can even see that there's windows in the walls up here. There's stuff in the mountain. Doors cut in everywhere. And just this big flow coming down the hill. And here's another shot. And as you can see, this is all brick again. All brick construction. Domes you know, everywhere. Towers. Just, just the same old, same old. And just look at the build out here. And we see lots of towns like this, really. Uh, I mean, this is what it looks like inside. Reminds me of the towns in like northern Africa that I've seen. And you just get lots of these streetways and alleyways like this. It's crumbling a bit there. So is this what the old world cities were like? Don't know. You can see there's a bit of facade being put on here. This is just all looks like the original stone. And here's a shot just to show you. Look, <laughs> can you see this? Okay, so they've built their wall on top. But look, we've got clear, you know, arched doors going into the cliff here. There's another one down here. This one they've built up and they've sort of finished it off, which is nice of them. Complete ruins here, just hanging out on the edge of the cliff. Another door down here. Door in here. You can see this is leveled off. You can see these perfectly straight lines and these almost looking like the bottoms of pillars and just yeah a bit silly i mean that that clearly looks like that yeah, that's a melted castle these are just the remnants look at that there's even a doorway there going through the the meltage and yeah down uh, no doubt all the way down the hill and this is also in Marden as well. So they've got, you know, the massive, you know, as we see everywhere. Here they've covered everything in sandstone. Uh, and yeah, that's, so they have the massive big buildings in there as well. Even though it looks like such a shanty town, it's full of stuff like this. And of course, you know, what is sandstone? Is that something to do with the meltage maybe? I don't know. Find these big, funny, you know, sort of shapes everywhere, and they always seem to be sandstone. And I just wanted to have a look at this, because this is a similar type structure. This is uh, sand, Saint Mich 
uh, what is it, Saint Michael in France, and this is clearly a star ford. <laughs> uh, look at this place. Look at this cathedral on the top. I mean, ridiculous. Now, that's an angel. We're going to have a look a bit more of that, that angel in a minute. Uh, but just look at this. Look, uh, I mean, look at the size of this building. We've got the walls down here. Look at that. That's a sheer one, two, three, four, five, six, seven story wall. Uh, big arch down here built into this house. And here we have the wall. Towers and all. And just a complete old world castle. I don't know how these lucky people got to build houses in here because I'd like to live there. Uh, but again, they, these, you know, again, looking like they're, they're the old brick, looking very weathered. Uh, and they've just, you know, facaded them and re-roofed them. And over here, you can just see the walls here. Just, you know, sheer straight down the cliff. As you do. Nice tower here. And look at this tower here. See, that 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 doesn't look like it's in the right spot, does it? You know, if this was all cleared and that was kind of higher up off the ground, then yeah, it would kind of look normal. But that looks a bit low. And what is, you know, again, this wall kind of just seems to be built into this big rock fall. You know, it's that same here, big bits jutting out, funny windows, another door that's been bricked up. Huge, you know, look at that building right on the water, like literally in the water almost. And edge of the star fort here. Interesting, it's got these slats and it's that close to the water. Is that some kind of intake valve? Pumps maybe? Just, uh, you know, just, just a ridiculous place. And this is a shop from up in the city. And again, you get this look, you know, where it's just kind of, uh, you know, walkways through cities with, with, you know, buildings on both sides, stairways going up and down, like a real kind of maze kind of thing. Um, like I said, that's, it's a common theme, that this kind of maze city type thing. And of course, this is just a shop from inside and it's this complete old world, as you would expect. And of course, again, it's uh, built for giants. Think of the size of these people. And the size of this. All right, now this is a video. I'll leave the link. It's quite good. Uh, one said Michel, Michel, Michael, I'm not sure which one it is, from a drone. So I just sort of flick through or else I'll get done for uh, copyright. Whoops. So there it is. Now there's a bit I want to show you. This is uh, the interior or the interior of the town. Just built straight into the water. So, you know, was this built when the water levels were different? Because look, this thing's an island. Uh, and depending on the tides, the tides go out and you can actually get to it and they come in and it's an island again. Uh, as you can see. And look, tunnels going in through so you can get in by boat. You know, did these used to be on land, on ground level? Up in the city, walls everywhere. Complete old world. I mean, this place is ridiculous. The, the amount of work that would go into creating one place like this, and we find these all over the earth, just everywhere. And look at that wall, just straight up the cliff. Oh, there's a cliff there. Don't worry, just go over it. Okay. Make sure you put a big tower up there too, because it's going to be really hard. Okay. I mean, <laughs> what's going on here? And why so tall? You know, because many people have mentioned with these. You know, these castles that are so sort of tall. Whoops. You know, this one sort of is on ground level, but like the last ones are monasteries and that, where it looks impossible to get up to them. You know, we're talking about airships. Is that how they were getting to these places and why they would build them there in the first place? Because all we ever hear is it's, it's to escape persecution. Uh, but they somehow find all of their materials, tradesmen, all this stuff to... To do the work for them. Now this is the top of the cathedral. Now check this out guys. Okay as we go up. Whoa hang on. That wasn't supposed to happen. 
Uh, here's the top, but you can see the Antiquitec on the top of this tower. But what we're going to cruise into now is just look at this. Look at this angel. Okay, it's standing there, one footed on top of this pillar. I don't know how it's connected. And I mean, look at it. Look, it's not like it's it's not a big object. Look at this wing. Like this is up way up high in the wind and the storms and all this stuff. Uh, how is it up there? How did they get it up there? And how is it not breaking? And how is it attached? Because seriously, I'll just press play for a few minutes. Just look at that. And there's the whole tower. Oops, I thought we had some more of the angel there, but just look at it. Look how high it is. How did they get it up there? That's my question, because when you look back here, that's it there. It's up here. That angel, how did they get it there? Airship? I mean, it doesn't help. And how's it even staying there? I mean, that's just, that's, yeah, pretty amazing stuff, if you ask me. Ah, so yeah, I think that's about all I've got to show you today, guys. I just saw some mountaintop monasteries, uh, you know, another melted castle in Turkey. And just, yeah, this, you know, I have shown these different pillars, and I, I might get into it a little bit more, because these things are everywhere, just big columns just by themselves and they've got angels on them and statues and how are these all erected how did they get them up there and how are they fixed in so so strong and you know why aren't they breaking falling off you know many many questions and if you haven't yet uh jump over to me we the link is in the description and we've got a group here uh, as you can see the realm earth research group uh, and we have berserker bear on here uh, Callum's on here, Michelle Gibson, uh, so we've got lots of people uh, and lots of posts down here, interesting stuff, and we want this to uh, basically be, oh that's a good pick, be a place where people can, you know, share awesome picks like this, um, information, and because when we sort of share picks, you know, that there's people all over the world, and so we can all sort of put input in, and, you know, many minds uh, will sort this problem out, you know, and this this question about his story and sort of, yeah, un unveil the past, our true past for us. So uh, there you go, nice airship. So jump over, uh, join up, join the conversation, uh, get involved, post everything interesting you find. And also, guys, uh, with my email, thank you all for sending me all the stuff on email, but uh, I just can't get to it all. I, I'm, I, I really can't. So sorry if I haven't replied to you. I do try and, and get to them. Uh, but a better place to, you know, if you're sending me, um, you know, personal messages, you can still send me. But as far as information uh, of what you found, this might be a better place to post it. That way, at least someone's going to see it. I'll, you know, hopefully I'll get there too. Uh, and, you know, that way we've got other creators here as well. So, you know, it's up, so that, that way anyone can make videos on it and we can get the information out there. All right. And also, uh, yeah, thank you to everyone who supports this channel. Uh, through Patreon, PayPal, and my merch store, and also everyone who uh, shares, likes, comments. Uh, I do appreciate you all, so please do share this content around, uh, help it get out there, and also uh, check out my other channels. There are links below. Um, yeah, if you haven't seen Autodidactic 1, definitely get on there, and you'll find my other channels. I have a couple down there, uh, so check them out. And obviously, if you enjoy the content, like, subscribe, and share. So thanks for spending some time with me, guys. Hope you enjoyed that one. Have a fabulous day, and I'll talk to you all on the next upload. Bye for now.